So, Grimm's Fairy Tales. What, what is Grimm's Fairy Tales? Grimm's Fairy Tales is Cinderella. Grimm's Fairy Tales is Sleeping Beauty, also known as Little Briar Rose. So, Little Briar Rose, Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, Rumpelstiltskin, Rapunzel, Hansel and Gretel, Little Red Riding Hood, Snow White, which put Walt Disney on the map. He should be kissing uh, Germany's ass. The Girl Without Hands, the Fisherman and His Wife, The Frog King, or Iron Henry, The Brother and Sister, The Story of the Youth Who Went Forth to Learn What Fear Was, The Wolf and the Seven Young Kids, The Valiant Little Tailor, Our Lady's Child, Mother Hulda, The Twelve Brothers, The Devil with the Three Golden Hairs, The Bremen Town Musicians, Cal Cat and Mouse in Partnership, and those are the top 20. So, you recognize the first top 20, but, I mean, these other ones are probably, you know, uh, worthy of listening to also. There's one story that I really liked. It was essentially uh, God or no death. The, so, this poor guy, he saves death. Death was like in some fucking thing. De death tells him, well, I can't save you from death. That's inevitable. Eventually, everybody's got to die, but I can warn you. And then, you know, many years later, death comes in to kill him, to take him, you know, to, to his old age or to the next place or what have you. And then the young man who saved death, he was like, what the hell? You said you was going to give me warnings. He's like, I gave you three warnings, three big warnings, and you, you know, well in advance, and you ignored them all. Illness, old age, and sleep. People get old. When you get old, you start to feel you're falling apart. You're about to die. Illness, when you get sick, why do you get sick? Because you're not going to live forever. Why do you sleep? Because your body can't just stay conscious for one fucking day. There's a God. There's fucking something more after that. Get the fuck out of here. I don't even, my consciousness don't even survive my sleep. You're going to tell me my, my consciousness survives death? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I killed a spider the other day. I guess it's, uh, it's soul went to heaven. All spiders go to heaven. No. Spiders don't go to heaven. Give me a motherfucking break, bruh. Bruh. So, ultimately, these stories are really fucked up, okay? Um, they're, they just shows you how dark and depraved Germany was, the land of Frankenstein. The Beauty and the Beast, in the 1957 version, this is from BuzzFeed, Belle's jealous sisters conspired to have her eaten alive by the beast. That's how they met. Her sister says, hey, Bill, there's the beast. Go say hi to him and see if he'll eat you up, right? Like the wolf in Little Red Riding Hood. And uh, it's a little fucked up, you know. Uh, your sisters are going to give you to a beast, and then eventually she, you know, it turned out to be okay for her. The Frog Prince. We know it in the Disney version of her kissing the, pr the frog, and he turns into a prince. Well, that's not how it actually happened. She beats the shit out of the, pr the frog and <laughs> turns back into the prince. Uh, or, in the other one, she burns and then decapitates him, lights him on fire, cuts off his head, and hopes that he stops putting out his uh, magic. So I think he just, she just fucking killed him. I don't even know if he turned back into the prince. He used to be a prince, turned into a frog. He's got all these powers, and then she just killed him. Hands on Gretel. And the story, they say that it was the stepmother... No, not the stepmother. It was the real mother, the blood mother. The blood mother was like, do I care about my kids' lives or do I care about my lives? I care about my life. There's only one piece of bread. Hey, kid, let's go out to the woods. Yeah, yeah, just look at that. We're going snipe hunting. Oh, there's a snipe in those trees you don't see. Just keep squinting. It's all the way up there. I swear, just look up there for about a minute, okay? For about a minute. And then she tips toes on off and says, adios, the little mermaid. Yeah, little mermaid. The Little Mermaid. Well, guess what? Uh, when the fairy tales, as a kid in the original 1837 tale, the titular, titular mermaid allows her tongue to be chopped off, right? And then she trades her fins in for a pair of legs, but her legs cause her constant pain, constant agonizing pain. And the prince marries another woman. She melts into the sea foam. <laughs> so she's like, ah, fuck this. So she lost. She didn't get the man. She got her tongue cut off. She got those shitty ass legs. She didn't get her man. She floats into the ocean. Rumple stilt skin. In the story, a lot of people say he disappeared in the thin air. 
No, he didn't disappear into thin air. He committed suicide by pulling his legs off. That's the Grimm brothers. That's, that's a grim fairy tale, right? That's grim as shit, ain't it? He's like, you got my name. Is it Joseph? Is it Henry? Is it Camillus? I know. Rumpelstiltskin! <laughs> oh, you got it! Damn it! And then he pulls his legs off and then dies. Bleeds all over the place, apparently. Cinderella says, uh, Cinderella, right? The Cinderella story, any underdog? Uh, the Cinderella's evil stepsisters? Which, uh, are they stepsisters? I can't even trust if they're stepsisters anymore. Maybe it was her real sisters. But when they try to put their feet into the glass slipper, they actually cut off their toes and they cut off the back of their heels so that their big-ass feet would fit into that tiny little slipper. And then later on, the two stepsisters get their eyes pecked out by pigeons. That's good stuff. I mean, I wish we actually knew about some of that shit. That's like, you know, that's uh, inspiring. That's not so much like those, um, you know, the Beauty and the Beast, the Sisters of the Beauty and the Beast. That was not very inspiring. Little Red Riding Hood, not an inspiring story. It's a cautionary tale. Do not, if you're walking alone in the woods with a big, well, why would you write, wear a bright red hood when you're walking in the woods? What does a bright red hood, wear camouflage, shit. You don't want people to, you don't want anybody to see that you're coming, you know, unless animals maybe scare them away or some shit, but. The, uh, in Italy and Austria, it was titled The Little Red Hat, and uh, Little Red Riding Hood was actually tricked into eating her grandmother's dead body. Then after that, she strips down naked and jumps into bed with the wolf, and then that wolf eats her alive. So, yeah, you know, a wolf, I don't even know how a wolf could look like a grandmother, like... The ears and the big long nose. It's like, wait a second. Why do you have fur all over your face? And why are you howling at me? The Pied Piper. The Pied Piper, the village is overrun with rats. The man goes in and he gets all the rats out of the town and everybody's happy. Not true. He wasn't happy because he was supposed to get paid for that. And so what did he do? He used his magical flute, and like he got all the rats to follow him, he got all the kids to follow him. And there's two different stories. Some say that he leads the kids to the cave, and then they hang out until the village people get his money, and then he gives the children back. But in the very original, he actually does the same thing to the children that he did to the rats. And he takes them to the river, and he drowns them all. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Snow White's so fucked up, super fucked up. Disney stole this story, but uh, he sanitized the shit out of it. So uh, Snow White, what happens to Snow White? The queen actually wanted to carve out Snow's heart. That's what, in Disney, right? She wanted to get the heart. But actually, the queen wanted not the heart. She wanted the lungs, and she wanted the liver. And Frishes, they serve liver and onions daily, because there's such a huge demand for liver and onions. But Snow White, the queen wanted Snow White's liver and lungs, and she didn't want just the liver and lungs to prove that she's dead. She wanted the liver and lungs so she could eat them. I guess to be like Chief Doublehead, like that Cherokee war chief, and eat the warrior's heart, and you could take their spirit. I don't know. The Queen was one evil, sick fucking person. I think it's also about good and evil. It's about how, you know, uh, how women, something about womankind being helpless and beautiful and innocent is better than being wicked and evil and having all the power or something. Um, I don't know. There's actually more shit, too. I heard that the dwarves had gang raped her, and I heard that it was actually based on the true story. Uh, that, uh, that this actually happened. Snow White was a true story. There was a woman, uh, she was going to marry a prince, and they had poisoned her, and so then, you know, the, to get her out of the way. And that's, you know, it, it makes sense if you actually think about it, because it was all kings and queens uh, back in Europe, and if you're a king, you had all the power. If you weren't a king, you're a fucking peasant being picked on by the king or a landlord, then you got all the money, but if you were working for the landlord, you didn't have shit. So if you're a peasant woman or peasant girl who uh, got the fancy of some prince or some king, well, you're on your way. You're going to go, you know, you're going to go um, uh, just up, up, and beyond. 
but uh, that wouldn't be good for the kingdom. There's a lot of people that's around him. His parents wouldn't like it. His, you know, any of the other kingdoms wouldn't have liked it. They like to marry each other, so that way they combine these land holdings and have political alliances and, you know, extend their realms, extend their regimes, you know, beyond their own borders. So marrying a peasant wouldn't do much for a king or a prince. So that's why Snow White got poisoned. By uh, by the apple, or however that that queen had poisoned her, and I'll talk. Uh, I'll do another one on that. But Sleeping Beauty, carrying on with the other stories that you didn't realize that are actually fucked up. Sleeping Beauty, okay. <laughs> this one is just as bad as having seven dwarves raping you, and they weren't dwarves. Some of them were children. And they started out as children, some of them were deformed, but they worked in copper mines, and they were deformed, and they didn't grow as uh, tall as they could. They were malformed um, because they were in the mines. And so they were actually like the fucked up men who, you know, had to um, live out in the woods by themselves and shit. And so they, okay, Sleeping Beauty. So... Aurora, I guess that's who Beauty is, is Aurora. She's taking a hundred year nap, and she, the king sees her, and he gets aroused, and he rapes her while she's sleeping. So, for some reason, she's having to sleep for a hundred years. A king, right? A king walks by when she's sleeping a hundred years, like that's a long ass time. And so he rapes her when she's sleeping. Nine months later, she gives birth to twins while she's still asleep. So she's a rape victim. She just gave birth to two children. The two children are, you know, crawling around, and one of the children sucks on her finger, and the poison, I guess, that she had in her finger is pulled out, and then eventually she comes to Sleeping Beauty. A little different from the uh, Disney version, when you, when you say. Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You know how she went into there and ate all her porridge, sat on their chairs, slept in their beds, and then ran away, and, you know, everything was okay? In the 1837 version, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, she doesn't escape out of the house unharmed. Instead, she is torn to pieces, and she's eaten by the bears, which makes sense since that's what bears do. They, they eat people. So here's another list, magicology.com. Fascinating histories behind your favorite fairy tales. So many of the brothers Grimm reappropriated their stories from dramatic neighbors surrounding communities. So we, a lot of people know that Grimm's fairy tales were more dark and more sinister than our versions today, but even their stories were more lighter than the original versions that had been passed before them. So Snow White. I'll touch on a little bit, but I really want to get into this because this is amazing. Margaret von Waldeck. She lived in the 16th century. She was raised in a mining town run by her brother, surrounded by children who worked in the mines. Her, their growth were stunted because of hard work, malnutrition. That's why they're referred to as dwarves. And then there's a real criminal uh, poisoning um, the children with apples because he thought the kids were stealing his fruit, so he would give them an apple that had poison and then got arrested for it. And then when Margaret was 16, she was sent away to Brussels where she fell in love with the future Philip II of Spain, much to the fury of her stepmother. And then eventually that's the reason why Philip's father and the stepmother poisoned her. Alice in Wonderland. It was written by Charles Dodson, who wrote under the name Louis, Lewis Carroll. It wasn't proven exactly, but they said that he came up with it when he was staying at some other person. Uh, this ain't even interesting. I don't even know why this is mentioned. But it's just saying that uh, there was some real... Fuck Alice in the Wonderland. It has nothing to do with the Grimm's fairy tales. The Frog Prince. So it says, right, they kissed the prince, and then it says, the story included in the Grimm's Brothers' first collection of fairy tales, it said, tales of a prince who hurls the frog against the wall. <laughs> a traditional act from old folk tales to inspire shape shifting. So that's how you get the frog to turn back to the prince, you throw it against the wall. And you would probably kill a frog if you did that. It would not change shape, you just, you're killing frogs if you think that it's going to turn into a princess. Ooh, I need a princess. Nope. Cinderella. The Brothers Grimm published their version of Cinderella, 1884. Upsetting as the poor girl's slavery is today, their version is much, you know, uh, bloodier. 
the party scene, Cinderella wishes to leave after dancing with the prince, but the prince won't have it because uh, he calls the whole staircase to be smeared with pitch, and there, when she ran down, had the matings left a slipper remain sticking. The next day, the magician prince, so he actually, she didn't just run off with a slipper, he made sure that he was actually trying to get her stuck in this, like, tar-like stuff. Smeared with pitch, uh, whatever pitch is. The next day, magician Prince goes to look for the slipper's owner. Cinderella's uh, stepsisters are too big. Their mother forces her to slice off her heel with a knife. And then she does force her foot into the shoe, swallow the pain, went to the king's son. He took her on his horse as his bride and rode away with her until little pigeons adorably cooed. That blood was filling up the shoe, staining the stepsister's white stocking after this graphic scene. He's like, wait a second. Little Red Riding Hood, right? I said that um, that uh, she had got eaten, that they had... What did he do? He did something. But um, he ate her all up, right? Sleeping Beauty, one of the more shocking histories behind fairy tales. And that's the Little Red Riding Hood. There's a lesson there. Don't talk to strangers. If you're, you know, it's basically for pretty girls and the wolves are crazy men out there. Sleeping Beauty, I know that I'm covering the same shit with a lot of these, but it's two different sources, so that way you know that I'm telling the truth, I'm not just making shit up here. So, Sleeping Beauty, it's a Charles Perrault pen story, published in 1697. King's daughter named Talia, so it's a little different than Aurora. Despite a warning from wise men, pricks her finger with a poison splinter and she dies. Her father left her body in the palace and moved away, but a prince found Talia one day. So this is not a king, this is a prince. She wasn't sleeping for a hundred years. She was dead, and he was like, ah, fuck her. You know, get get the hell out. Uh, not, not literally, okay, she's a corpse. Don't fuck dead corpses. But a prince did fuck the dead corpse. And, uh, yeah, he fucked the dead corpse and then uh, got her pregnant. So apparently she wasn't that dead. And Talia developed the fetuses, gave birth to twins, who were then cared for by fairies. One magical day, her son sucked her poison-pricked finger. She came back to life. Of course, the prince, who was actually married to someone else, returned. But his wife learned of his affair with the dead corpse and ordered Talia's twins captured and cooked for supper. So, man, Talia just can't catch a fucking break. Sleeping beauty, she dies. And King, or her father leaves her, and then she's raped while she's dead. It has children while she's dead. Wakes up, right? So you think it's over. Now she's back to life, so maybe she can live her life, take care of her kids, and have a nice little life. Not true. Now she has to deal with the prince's wife because, like, he learned, she learns that they had sex or that he was interested in her. And it's like, oh, shit, we need to do something about it. So we need to catch the children and cook them. And I don't, what is up with eating children and eating people? So uh, the cook couldn't bear to kill the children, and when the wife found out, she tried to burn Talia at the stake. The prince saved her in the end. So eating people, cannibalism, why are we doing this? You know, when there's blood and warshed, you know, uh, you had um, corn blossom and uh, doublehead. So Chief Doublehead was eating the hearts of his enemies to take their spirit and take the warrior's spirit. But I wonder if there was so much poverty that you had to eat humans if you wanted to live. And then, of course, there's Hands on Gretel, which um, was the, you know, the mother. The mother who left him out to go die. So that's, uh, you want to know how, where I came from? You want to know a little bit about Germany? You want to know how fucked up this bullshit is? There you go. Margaret von Waldeck. Uh, Wikipedia also says it's also similar to Maria Sophia von Erfel. So there's two possible cases that Snow White could have actually have originated from. And then Corazon's Corner, the true origins of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It expands on the probably the Philip story, right? King Philip, since he is the more famous of the... Uh, Prince Philip Christoph von Erfel and his wife Baroness von Bettendorf. Very German names. Prince Philip, who especially became King Philip, Philip II. So Margaret von Waldeck is the one that this one goes on to. Five Forgotten Fairy Tales. I guess I'll get to that one. The best fairy tales. I already mentioned all those. Those were all the other ones. And actually, shit, I shouldn't have cut out of that. 
But you should check those other fairy tales out because they'd be worth reading. Uh, they're the best ones of the Grimm's fairy tales. They're the top, you know, seven you would know, but all the rest of them you should check out. There's five forgotten fairy tales and five lesser-known Grimm fairy tales that should be movies, and then they use the origin of Snow White. I probably won't do much about the origin. Check out, just check it out on yourself with the origin of Snow White. It was a true story, Margaret von Waldeck. So the mother was jealous of the daughter's beauty, didn't want to be, she wanted to be the prettiest in all the land, and she didn't want the, her, someone's beauty competing with her own, so she got rid of her. She tried to get rid of her, at least. Um, and uh, she did. She actually succeeded in getting rid of her. She killed her, and she's dead. So she didn't survive. The dwarves didn't save her, and she didn't marry her prince and live happily ever after. So the Snow White story, which made Walt Disney, Walt Disney banked his entire empire on Snow White, um, that, uh, you know, that is not the true story. So it was inspired by Grimm's fairy tales, but Walt had a different take on it. And I think I like the little ones, the, you know, how the children played Slaughter the Pig, uh, the story about death uh, warning you with sickness and uh, sleep and old age. I warned you, I gave you three warnings that you were going to die. I gave you plenty of warning. You knew you were going to die. Probably uh, ever since you were conscious and someone told you, hey, by the way, we all die. So if you didn't know that, well, you, you do know. Cultural regeneration. Don't forget that term. Cultural regeneration. Say it with me 5,000 times. Cultural regeneration. Cultural regeneration. Actually, this makes me think of my favorite joke of all time. Knock, knock. Who's there? Go fuck yourself.